What's up, guys? So Derek here, back for a, another VOD review. Today, we're doing a VOD review of Kurum because Kurum played a comp that I really, really want to talk about because we received the notes from Mortdog about what the, the B patch is going to be. As I talked about in the last video, there is going to be. They were planning on there being a B patch for this patch because they knew that some things were going to be out of line. Uh, surprisingly, actually, Lilio was out of line after the changes to her targeting. So uh, Lily is being nerfed, Cinder's being nerfed, Orn's being nerfed. Um, and there is one more nerf in there. Trick shot is being buffed actually back a little bit because uh, because Kaisa is like one of the worst performing champions in the game. Um, I don't want to talk about any of those champions this game though. Today I want to talk about Snipers and Ash uh, because this is a comp that received a pretty significant buff. Um, two sniper was buffed, four sniper was buffed. Um, and so people have begun playing the four sniper version of Ash a lot. And this is also a comp that was not touched at all in the B patch. And so Krim actually has a pretty good spot for it here. We already have the sniper opener with a potential LW slam. Uh, Krim's gonna opt to not slam Last Whisper here, which I like because we don't need to slam it versus this person. So why would we? We also picked up this over encumbered uh, augment here, which reduces the number of bench slots you have, but you get the bonus of getting some uh, items later down the line, which I, I really, really like. It's just... It's 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 not free items because you end up not being able to hold some pairs that you would like to hold, but it's it's pretty cheap and you get a bunch of items from it. We already have potentially like a warden setup that we could play now. Yeah, we can get out of the uh, the Darius here, and yeah, he's even just gonna play the two warden. I like this a lot. The the Yasuo was pretty nice, but uh, because he's a two star unit, but Alawi is just so nice and she allows you to play sort of aggressively into this warden line. It simplifies your game so so much. The only downside to summon item on Caitlyn is that we're going to have to find our placement Caitlyn later because she wants to be on our board. But the idea behind this board, if you guys haven't played it or seen someone play it yet, is you just play four sniper, four warden. The the vertical sniper being buffed makes it really, really nice. Four warden was also buffed, I'm pretty sure, this patch. So that makes it really, really nice as well. It's almost a, a throwback to earlier on in the set, if you guys remember even PBE when Ash with uh, with a Mumu frontline was really really strong. Wow, the the early level here from Kurum. It's almost like he wants to. I mean, this allows him to hold on to an extra unit. I'm pretty surprised by this level, but I guess there was someone in his pool that he wanted to beat. I mean, it's a very very aggressive. The only problem is if he loses his streak this game, he is going giga eighth. I I, I would have thought we would have just not held on to the Kogma pair and then just held on to the Alawi pair here. But hey, if you can keep your streak here, it's fantastic. And his board is not bad by any means. Golden Spatula for every champion on Carousel is pretty interesting. Ideally, this is going to end up as a Porcelain Spat. I would have to imagine we can play four Porcelain on something like level 9, but we'll see what it wants to end up being. We're not able to pick up the bow to make out a Porcelain Spat, so we're just going to take this Cloak here. Probably will be Declaw, if I had to guess, but we'll see. Okay, with Alawi too, I think we can actually be pretty confident about when streaking here, and yeah, we're going to end up playing Gnar here just as a... I guess, in Kerm's opinion, slightly better Warden. I'm actually kind of a Gnar hater in spots like these. I think that Gnar doesn't actually do all that much here. It's also really, really awkward because we early double leveled. We can't make 10 this round. So like I said, we can, and because we bought the Alawi too, we can't make 10 here. So we're going to be very, very broke this game. The upside is we already have Alawi too. So we need very, very little for our board to actually spike a ton. If we just pick up one Ash at some point, then our board will be quite strong. So I think... You know, we're, we're in a fine spot, certainly, uh, if we win streak, if we get the five streak here. But it is a little scary being this broke. If you end up high rolling, if you end up fighting some kind of, like, high roller, it's uh, it's a little scary. We're also going to opt to get in five ghostly here. I like this. The, the second Kog'Maw didn't really do anything. And yeah, like I said, I don't really care for the Gnar as a random unit on the board. This also allows us to sort of maintain the possibility of playing Ink Shadow. And yeah, I mean, look at this Alune one trying to get through our Alawi 2. It's just never going to happen. So... Free 5 streak is pretty good with the Alawi 2. We have fantastic direction into this comp. Uh, when you take this augment, it's kind of awkward because if you pick up these orbs, they're just going to explode into gold because you don't have a bench. The downside, though, is, is we kind of like have to, to pick up these orbs or else we're not going to be able to make Econ. So we're just going to have to you know, pick up the orbs, I would think, here. It looks like Kura might even... Yeah, he's not going to pick them up. I, I think I would just always pick these up for the potential Econ because only making 20 this round feels horrible, but... You do get the upside of potentially seeing what units end up in them. Uh, they ended up being gold anyway. Uh, and we just got a second spatula there. So that's, it's not going to be a porcelain spat. It's just going to be a tactician's crown. So nothing wrong with that. We also just got a bunch of tank items here. There's potentially a gargoyle, potentially a bramble. Uh, we have to think about making something like that. And yeah, he is going to make the bramble here. And a spark actually, which is pretty interesting. 
gets rid of his rod component. I'm actually pretty surprised about that. I mean, it's a fantastic item to slam on Alawi here. She likes the stats a lot and just getting third item onto her feels really good. The only downside is we got rid of our Gwinsu component just to just to make an Ionic Spark, which I wouldn't think is that high priority. I mean, I guess you're going to be playing a few Ghostly in this comp, but you're not going to be playing super vertical Ghostly. Yeah, I'm surprised by the last Whisper into Spark here. I mean, even if you save the rod for Gwinsu, I, I would have been happy with something like an Adaptive Helm here. But it's interesting that Krim likes the Spark there. Maybe, maybe there's something. I mean, it's possible that he's thinking about playing around Lilia this game instead of the more vertical sniper setup that I'm talking about being so prevalent here. And I mean, Lilia is obviously a very good unit. It's just we don't really have a single item for Lilia. It's possible that because he got dropped a tier, he's thinking more about playing towards like a Lilia angle here uh, instead of just uh, as many ashes, you know, as many snipers you can get on the board. Maybe he's thinking about and he's also holding on to these Kog'Maws for so long. So that's probably it. After thinking about it, he's thinking there's a decent chance that he duo carries Lilia this game. And so he just wants to make the spark to have a spark. Also, yeah, remember to slam a Tactician's Crown onto one of your units because it actually gives stats now. I'm sure there's someone who's going to be in the comments and who's like, what? I didn't know Tactician's Crown gives stats. But yeah, at the start of the set, they uh, they made it give stats. I did not read that. I did not read the patch notes for the start of the set, so I completely missed that. And like a week into the set, I someone was like, slam Crown. And I'm like, why? And then I hovered over it and I was like, what? It, it doesn't really give significant stats. It's definitely not an item you want on your carries, but it's just kind of a, a random item that you throw on somebody else. Item-wise here, I mean, you have open bow. I feel like you have to pick this up here. This is, I, I really would have liked this to be Gwensu for my Ash here, but in, instead it's going to end up potentially being like a static ship, or maybe we just hold on to this tier for longer. We'll see what it ends up being. We're going to get Umbral in here, which is a pretty nice little synergy we can add in here. We're really just, I mean, we're playing around these Wardens and these Snipers and then fitting in whatever else we can. And the big thing is that we found this Silas. Silas such a strong unit though was was nerfed pretty hard this patch but he's gonna do very well with the spark just shredding the magic resist of the front line so you know it's he'll be a pretty decent random addition onto this board for now he's gonna come out later for sure we are gonna hold on to yeah i was gonna say i feel like we we don't need to hold on to this gnar any longer though we, ooh, we do get an atrox too so hey maybe we'll end up playing some kind of ghostly board for a little while some kind of like four ghostly board and then getting into something else later we'll see i mean tft is a game about playing around what you hit we we have an atrox too and a Lowy too it certainly seems like we should play this for our early game and then we'll see what we get down the line the upside is that we kept our streak for a good while so our econ's been repaired to some degree though we're still not rich i would say 54 gold here level six we're kind of i would say a little bit below average probably in the top like 60 percent of, of econ so also the bottom 40 percent okay maybe i shouldn't talk in percentages morgana here that's our fourth ghostly if we want to fit it in and yeah we will just play the morgana here i like it and yeah just make sure to keep warden in warden is too big not to play i mean we naturally so many units for this morgana plus silas board i wish we could play it but our items just make zero sense for it and yeah he's gonna start team building the board looks like yeah he does want to play the annie version instead of the vertical warden version but i think I think we'll end up in that version just because of how many wardens we've naturaled here, especially after just picking up a random Gnar 2 that can fit on the board. Or hey, maybe we'll just play like two warden and then play around just getting Gnar in for, for random Dryad, get Orin in down the line. We'll see. Definitely need to make some frontline items here. And yeah, I really, really like Redemption and Sunfire here. Sunfire gives us that heal cut that we don't have. And Redemption is kind of like a, a 3.5th support uh or or just like may an item onto this allow it feels really nice to just have an extra item on her basically uh ash this is what revealing your next opponent for the entire game okay i mean we can live with that i guess i, I kind of don't love this one just because it it takes i mean it's it's kind of fun but yeah you can see here kerm 61 gold here just not not very rich at all we're gonna get umbral in here but yeah you certainly can't roll in a spot like this if we go eight we're gonna have 10 gold to roll so we have to sack two rounds the upside is you scatter on the lobby there's someone playing kaisa there's someone playing duelist so this ash line is actually not that contested this guy certainly looks like they're gonna want to play towards lilia but yeah he's he's looking for extra snipers here just to see like okay maybe we can play the vertical sniper version which after the the buffs to snipers i think is very strong we also managed to win this fight at four three like i said the alawi and just having like a few random upgrades really does a lot for our board but i'm a bit surprised that we're as as healthy as we are 92 hp here i mean honestly I, i'm not that surprised if you if you look at the fact that we have alawi too we have nar too we have the atrox too also caitlin is just a good unit honestly 
dude's item hold for, for Ash late game. I've had so many games where just a random Caitlyn 1 or Caitlyn 2 carries me so far just because this unit is always going to kill stuff if you have a good enough frontline and hitting the Alawi 2 is huge. I mean, yeah, look at this Caitlyn 3k damage with the Alawi 2. That's enough to clean up that fight and win it, which is pretty crazy here. So at this point, we're just looking for third Ash item. I would think uh, ideally it's a sword item. We have Cloak open, but I mean, you could go Redon's actually if we're allowed to pick it up. I mean, Redon's would be great. If not, we can just go for this glove here, half of IE. I guess it could be like Guardbreaker or something. Yeah, I feel like it has to be the glove here. I'm surprised that Kurum even thought that long on it. But yeah, we have to roll a bit here. There's the Ash. So we can look at getting Force Sniper in now. Uh, there's another Ash. So at this point, I feel like you have to roll at least to like 10 gold just because you've, you you need to, to go for it now that you have the the call of, of potentially hitting Ash 2, and we also have the potential Silas 2, but I love this out of Karma playing four Ghostly Force Sniper. Certainly not the like standard cookie cutter board, but still very, very strong. And the upside is that you know we have all these upgrades already. We're not we don't want to cut this allowy if we if we don't have to. Uh we're gonna get the Senate in here who's just a slightly better sniper here. We don't need the armor shred. Uh or we don't really need the Kogmaw of Kogmaw because Kogmaw is just not really gonna do anything here, especially when we're not playing around invokers. And yeah, I like I like rolling a little bit here. I, I certainly would have rolled down to at least find one upgrade here. And we find the Silas too. So I imagine the Silas is going to stay on our board for a long time. And hey, maybe we're going to play Ghostly Snipers instead of Warden Snipers. I mean, this is what's uh what's so cool about TFT is you end up in a spot like this where you, you know, high roll some of the units and you can just play towards them. Like it's this is just really, really nice flex play out of Kurum here. Going to sell off a couple of those units that he's unlikely to play. And the main thing we need to find at this point is just the Ash too. Uh, we really, really need to find Ash 2 and move items over to her at 5-1 or else our spots can be looking a little bit weak. And you can see Karam already sort of pivoting into the 4 Warden version. He's slowly getting some of those units in. Another bow's a little awkward. We do kind of want a sword item for Ash here. Uh, we get another augment, by the way. Oh, Karam. Th this Karam guy was looking at something at the start of the game, so I didn't uh, get to see what the portal was. But now I realize it's the, the Lilia portal where all of our augments, or either that or the Azir portal where, where all the augments are moved around. There is a set I feel like that has to come in onto the board here. So yeah, let's cut down on some of the ghostlies, get into Vertical Warden. I feel like you do still have to roll here. I'm not, okay, I like this. Yep, and then just get in. Uh, yeah, any other sniper, we have the replacement, which feels really, really good. And we're gonna make a Renance here for the Ash. And then the last item is, what? We don't need another Spark. I mean, you could just go Death Cap Silas. I mean, it's, what is this? What is this? Another Gwinsu? Can't be another Last Whisper. Uh, I'm, I'm interested to see what this would be. I, I feel like it would have to be, that caps us here, but he just wants another Gwinsu onto our, our sniper here. Interesting. Okay. I mean, I could I could see it. We're... I mean, this is just our board at this point. We have the extra unit slot, and that just ends up being Silas here as uh, as a really cool guy. But if you didn't have the extra unit slot, you just play four and four, and that would be your board. And then you can start itemizing stuff like Amumu, stuff like Set. If you can get to something like an Amumu 3 in this setup, it feels really, really good. Uh, he's also holding on to this Cinder here as another potential in here, because... Obviously, you have two Faded in with the Aphelios and the Set. You also have an Arcanist in with the Alawi. So he's really, really considering the level 9 Cinder in to just add a billion synergies, which makes a lot of sense. You could fit it in over the Silas right now, but the problem is you'd lose so much frontline doing that. We don't have a two-star four cost to play around. We don't have like a Nautilus here. We just have this random Gnar sitting on our board right now. So I feel like you lose too much of the frontline doing that. But you can see 92 HP and win streaking here. We streaked so long with just the, the little sniper setup with the uh, with the Caitlyn early game, which does so well. And now this board, we just barely lose to a, a quite strong duelist board with Elise into with great items. They had great augments as well. So you can see, you can see the power of this board when you end up in a really good spot for it. Uh, item wise here, I still want to finish that Silas item. There's not much here. You can just see like a Sterax for uh, a Sterax or a BT or I guess an IE for your set here. Ooh, and augment wise. Ooh, is he really looking at? I honestly would have taken Final Ascension over either of these two. Harmacist or Radiant Relics? I just, I can't imagine I would take Radiant Relics or Harmacist here. I guess, yeah, okay, I'm just gonna go for the Harmacist. Kind of, what, what was the option that I was looking at again? I, I feel like the third option, oh, is Final Ascension? Final Ascension? I mean, I guess he's just not confident that he can get to Final Ascension. I'll have to look at the stats after this. I'm kind of surprised by this, though, because we already have Martyr for all this healing, so I feel like Harmacist is gonna do very little on our board. And I feel like something like Final Ascension, I feel like a lot of time... I guess the only thing is our frontline isn't amazing, but I felt like with Martyr and Gwinsu, like our Ash would just become a monster in overtime. But yeah, I guess Kurum just wants to buy more time to get Ash to that. He doesn't really want to have to, you know, get to... He doesn't want to be afraid of losing fights prior to 15 seconds, and this will guarantee that that doesn't happen. 
I mean, without Martyr, I could see this being a pickup. Maybe the other idea is that just Harm Assist. It's nice on melee carries, and we're already playing around this set. Like, set two is going to be, like, how we cap out our board, and we already have the Silas as well, so both of them really, really benefit from Harm Assist. Maybe that's the idea? I could sort of see it. Uh, it's also IE for the uh, the Aphelios. He ends up just itemizing here. We're really... Man. Uh, I mean, I guess the, the idea from Kerma as well is we're playing for Sniper. For Sniper is such a big buff that it makes more sense to itemize the Aphelios than itemize the set. Or, or not the set, but the uh, the Silas. But I mean, yeah, it's also that Silas was nerfed last patch. He's kind of a weaker unit in general compared to the patch prior where he felt like he was just a monster. So yeah, I think or I'm just thinking, okay, we can we can itemize our fourth our yeah, our, our fourth sniper here and, and feel really good about that. Uh we can level here, get the Cinder in. He's also holding on to Orns, but I'm I would be surprised to see an Orn come in here. There's the Nautilus, which can just come in. Uh, over the, yep, over the, the Gnar, we can cut that out, continue to roll down here, because we're getting close to the end of the game, though we are very, very uh, healthy as far as, uh, I mean, as our HP goes, and we just gotta pick out what item we want here, yeah, based on what he's been doing so far, it's gonna be Guardbreaker for the Aphelios, yeah, he really, really likes just getting this Aphelios itemized, I mean, it makes sense, he's a, he's a fantastic unit, uh, he's gonna be our secondary carry in the fact that we're playing around for Sniper, and yeah, I mean, this could end up being our board, there is still the opportunity once we find something like a Nautilus 2 of cutting this uh, Silas later, but what do you even cut him for? I guess, I mean, right now we could fit Ink Shadow because of the, the plus one unit that we got from the portal, but that's not going to be the case later into the game. Uh, scary thing is we are fighting, I'm actually surprised, we are fighting a Kaisa board where this is a comp that was very, very low impact uh, prior to the, well, prior to the B patch that hasn't come out yet. But yeah, a lot of people not excited about uh, Kaisa, but they uh they found a a team of three so it's it's really more like a team of three board uh instead of kaisa um okay we we opt to get the orn in here finally and then just drop out of faded we don't really care about faded here we'd rather play behemoth it's kind of surprising to me but i mean behemoth adds a decent amount of frontline and we get to play a slightly better unit but yeah i'm surprised you lose arcanist and faded here to see a behemoth in um uh, but hey we i mean it, it's certainly a close fight so you, you can make the argument that the uh the udir here does a lot of work we also could get, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know about Dryad plus one here. How many Dryad stacks do we have? Like two? This is like barely an item right now. Uh, we do find duty or two, so that's the upside to capping out this board. But I, I feel like I would have much preferred something like a Bloodthirster onto this Udyr instead of a Dryad spat that's not going to do anything. And also, I'm kind of interested in swapping the set and the Alawi here so that our Orn always farms item for Udyr. Because I'd much rather, yeah, have him farm an item for Udyr than... Farming a Last Whisper for set feels so bad. There's a Volley Bear that walks into our back line, and that is just barely going to kill us for the top two. But you can see, I mean, there's a, a lot of stuff occurred this game that was interesting, and, and Kerm gave me a lot to think about with, uh, you know, itemizing the Aphelios this game and, and sort of like the board that we pivoted into. But you could just see, I mean, even just, just hitting Ash 2 and getting to level 9, we, we coasted to a top two. We beat a board with Teemo 3 on it. We just barely lost to a super, super juiced up uh, duelist sports you can see how strong the sport is uh, in the right position for it and we win streak for so long so hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please like comment subscribe check out my twitch and all my other links down below thanks for watching also this board is not being nerfed in the b patch so i will expect it to be even stronger okay bye